Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, it's the day after Christmas. I don't know about y'all, my brain's fried. I am not feeling like I wanna do anything. Does anybody relate to that? Just, you know, when Christmas is on a Monday, and Tuesday's kinda long. I hadn't really planned on filming a video for today. I figured you'd just take the Wednesday off. Don't do that very often. Figured nobody here cares. Y'all were probably too busy and bored me watching videos anyways. However, a box came in the mail that I had actually complete, that was probably horribly obnoxiously loud and scratchy, I'm so sorry. Especially if you're wearing headphones. Good timing for these to show up, because like I said, there wasn't gonna be a video if these hadn't been here. But figured, since it showed up, may as well cut the box open and let, we could all have a look together. Heat pack is cold, ice cold, so that was probably a waste of money, but how's the plant look? Looks pretty good just in a plastic bag. Oh, and there's another one. Oh, these are nice. This is great. I was really curious. Okay, wait until you get the better camera angle to start talking about things that need details. Okay, you see them? Look at them. Do you know what these are? These are mangroves. These are pretty good looking mangroves. I was really wondering what these were going to look like because they arrived on December 26th from USPS which means you know that they sat around for a minute. And uh, with the heat pack, that's cool, but the box wasn't insulated, so I don't really know what that heat pack really would have done for these guys, but they're in plastic bags that holds in a little, just a little bit of air, not very much. Okay, I think should probably cut these open. That would make them more interesting to talk about. So when it comes to mangroves, if you are somebody who has worked or been involved in the fish hobby, then you may know a little bit about them. They've been popular for a pretty long time as plants you can put into your fish tank, fresh or salt water. There are some mangroves that prefer one or the other, but those aren't really commonly sold, dealing mostly with red mangroves here. And when you buy them, it's relatively inexpensive. You just get them as little propagules. Seedling forms on the end of the branch, drops into the water. That was a very lazy way of explaining it. That's not really the point here. The main thing is that usually you get them as just these these beans. It looks like a bean and mangroves are very, very slow to grow, especially if you have them in salt water. Their care is a little bit different in salt water as well. The whole appeal of a mangrove are those nice big stilt roots and that's something you're gonna have to wait a long time to get if you're doing this yourself, if you're growing them from a small little plant. I have been looking and trying to find some nice larger mangroves for a while. I probably check maybe once a month across eBay, Etsy, and Google, just to see if anybody has some larger plants available. Yes, it does make it cost more, but it is well worth it because you're paying for time. So you can see this is that bean part right here. This is basically what you'd be getting. Usually you can get a whole bunch of them for like 20 bucks, something like that. And eventually, someday, be very patient, they will start to develop roots like we're seeing here. These are some nice looking roots too. And then within probably a year, I would say, you would have about this much growth. I would say that's probably a yearling to a year and a half wing, something like that. And I'm talking about in salt water. That's where these are typically purchased and where people usually try them in fresh water or even in a container mix. They'll grow a lot faster. I'm all about those stilt roots. And those take a few more years to get on these. I'm talking about in a fish tank, right, indoors not outdoors in your more tropical environments. Even still, it takes a long time to get them to this level outdoors and then to have some branches on them. This one hasn't started branching yet, but it has some stems. Yellow leaves, that's a pretty normal thing on a mangrove, particularly if they're grown in or near salt water. These were also just shipped and they've been in a box for several days and it was fairly cold outside for one of those days. So I couldn't tell you exactly why those leaves are yellow. That could be because of the shipping. It could just be because the plant is maturing. You need to wash the leaves off. If you're growing them in salt water, you can't let salt, you can, but you shouldn't let salt build up on the foliage for too long. It's good to make sure to rinse the leaves off and then the plant will regulate. <laughs> That's not really the right, we, what's the term? This is the plant channel. I'm supposed to be using the right term here. Transpirate, transpiration, have better transpiration when you don't have the leaves clogged up with salt. So there it is, a couple of beautiful mangroves. I think one was 27, which was this one. That's not bad for one that has some growth on it and has already been started and has some good roots on it. It's a pretty good price. The bigger one was like $50. The seller, this is from Etsy, should have mentioned that. The seller on Etsy did have a special going where it was like buy two, get one free. 
they messaged me a few days later. I didn't see it because I never checked my messages on Etsy asking if I wanted to buy another one to get the buy to get one free thing. So I didn't take advantage of that. However, I feel like if you bought one of the cheap ones and one of the big ones, you could just throw in another one of the cheap ones, couldn't you? I mean, maybe that would have been fine. I would have been okay with it, but it also I don't need it. I didn't need a third one, so that didn't matter. One of the fun things about mangroves is there are various ways to grow them. You can grow them as potted plants. Just make sure that there's not much going on as far as drainage is concerned with the container. So maybe even a container that doesn't have a hole in the bottom wouldn't be a bad idea. I prefer to like a uh, organically rich mix for them. I don't have anything like that laying around and I'm going to be putting these in a fish tank. I just put it in the pot for demonstration. The whole thing doesn't even fit into frame because it's so big. That's a great size for something like this. So that's, yeah, container. Something nice and rich, a good blend in there that doesn't drain very well. Having it be porous is still a good idea because there can be more movement of some kind around the roots of the plant as it's a more porous mix. So they do grow in mud flats and things like that. So it's not always the case, but things are just different in a container versus out in the open when they're growing raw, not raw, free ranging. <laughs> or you can have them in your fish tanks. Just wanna make sure you don't over submerge them. Generally right around this dark point is right about as deep as you'd want to go with them. That's probably not gonna be in focus, but you can probably, you can see it, right? Where it's dark versus where it's light. If you don't wanna focus camera, there we go. See the line right there? So could submerge that leave the green above whatever you're using for them. It's just very important to not over submerge the roots, particularly the aerial roots, all of these down here. See, there's lots of feeder roots and baby roots. So those are not aerial roots. Looks like there might be the start of an aerial root right around here. Just has a little off branch on it, maybe another aerial root right there. So when I pop this up, I'm probably just gonna keep it submerged right about here. And everything from there and up needs to be above the water. They do like a lot of light. Some airflow is going to help them as well. Like I said, if it's salt water, it's a good idea to rinse that foliage off. I'd say every month or so, probably. It really just depends on how much salt buildup you end up having on the leaves, on the tops and the bottoms of the leaves. Some people never do it at all and that things work out okay. It's just a matter of, keeping an eye on the foliage and waiting to see if you get any crusties. If there's crusties, like a film of, you'll know if it's like a glaze on top of the foliage, then you need to wash the foliage off. Okay, I know I said I wasn't going to pop them up, but I think I may as well since I'm sitting right here. And I just found a bag of Leca sitting right next to me. These are just expanded clay pebbles. Retain a good amount of moisture. Oh, you know, and one of the nice things about using Leca is I'm not gonna have to worry as much, not that I'm really all that concerned about it, but it doesn't matter quite as much where that line is as long as the dark part is mostly submerged. The plant itself should be fine. Where did my watering can go? Oh, I don't know where it went. Here's some water. If using LECA or crushed coral, some sort of more gritty material like this, then the planting depth does still matter, but it's there's better airflow around the surface. Just a little bit too deep, like just a smidge too deep. It's probably going to be okay. Okay, so that's mangrove number one. Do I have a pot big enough for number two anywhere near me that I could just use for right now? That really depends on how bendy is this root. Because these roots are busted. So really the pot only needs to be about that big. You wanna do that, like that. You see how that bends in like that? Doesn't have to be huge. Okay, that's going to have to do. It's the only container I have around that doesn't have a hole in the bottom. And I should point out, this is just for tonight, maybe for a couple of days. It is later in the evening and I just don't have time right now to be dealing with potting plants up and moving them into the fish tanks. That's a whole or deal for ones these size. I would probably recommend if you were doing this to put it into something at least three times this size. They can get pretty hefty root masses on them. This is just cause I don't have time to get to these until tomorrow and those roots need to stay wet and dark too. They shouldn't just be sitting out 
in the lights. This is just, that'll carry them through. So that's all, this is just to hold them by until tomorrow. Yeah, a little one like this, that would be fine in this container for a while. This big one though, that really, that should go in something larger, probably with a soil. Important to remember with LECA, it's an inorganic medium. So going to have to stay on top of fertilizing if you're doing something like this, I would do it at a quarter strength. When you're dealing with something that doesn't have drainage, you have to be much more careful about your fertilizers. Run them outdoors, whole different story. Put them in the ground. If you have some place, zone 9B, probably 10 and up, a spot nice and boggy where the ground stays moist like pretty much all the time, they'll do great. With those awesome stilt roots on them, when they get to a point where they have woody growth on them, you can prune on them more easily. I wouldn't prune on this one for a long time. This one, I'm gonna wait for it to go ahead and start branching out, but I'm going to be maintaining a height, not much bigger than this. These can get huge, but I'm gonna be doing kind of a mangrove extra large bonsai sort of deal with that one. And again, not in that container. It's just a way to keep those roots wet <laughs> until I can get them into something more appropriate tomorrow. If you like having trees indoors and you have some nice bright light and you're a heavy handed waterer, maybe give one of these a try. The stilt roots, they're pretty awesome. It takes a while to develop them. The more humidity, the better for those stilt roots as well. That's why if you have them over a fish tank, that's really the better way to do it. If you have a fish tank, great way to export some nutrients from the water. In freshwater tanks, pothos really is way better. I wouldn't ever buy a mangrove for a freshwater tank and say this is going to help export lots of nutrient, but for saltwater tanks, they do a pretty good job. There are still lots of other things that work better, but they're just neat, they're fun. Really cool plants. They could talk about them for a long time. So there are lots of different types and they have some different variations in how they grow with the different climates that they grow in all the different animals that live around them, the way that they host nature and work with nature, just fun, really fun stuff. But uh, yeah, this is supposed to be more of an unboxing video and threw in some other randomness in there and got them potted up. So that's gonna do it. Comment down below, say hi, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. you. You like your mangroves? I think they're fun, really fun plants. Can't wait to get some stilt roots on these. It's gonna be a while, but much faster than if I were just starting from one of those little beans like you normally start them from. They even have these on a larger size, but it was like $100 for next size up and shipping was pretty expensive for that one. I was like, yeah, I think I'd rather go ahead and get the two of the different sizes and I'll hold off on that other one. I'm gonna stick with these for now. Just throwing it out there, probably a good idea to make sure that they're ethically grown. The, these, these are never supposed to be collected from the wild in the United States. That's never supposed to happen. They're a protected plant. That really should rarely be the case. I don't think that's a common practice in the U.S. anyways. People are pretty respectful when it comes to the mangroves. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.